So I think that this pulling of the streets, if we want to dig deeper, has to be understood as what has brought us here with the world that was built after the Second World War, where the dollar was the, 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 the hegemony of the dollar and the dollar as the global currency that organizes all the other economies. Now, and I'm wondering if we can ask a little bit around the cultural or the, the sort of psychological element here, which is in order to, to get people, and it connects with Vandana's talk too, to accept that this is what we're going for. We're going to kind of the empty calories, carbon offsetting, everything can be reduced to this one specific thing and technology is going to save us and that's the savior, like this kind of wholesale narrative that we're being asked to embark upon. All of these other things need to be put into place for us to believe that to be true and to create the appetite for us to want to give our data to technology, to put ourselves mm -hmm. under procedures, to say yes to genetic testing, to 23, whatever it is. So I'm curious, how do you see the cultural strings being pulled? That's quite loaded, but I think it's appropriate for what we're talking about. In order to get people like you and me comfortable with this way of thinking about the world, because then we're also talking about another kind of monoculture of the mind, just sort of creating a specific cosmovision that allows people to say yes to some things and no to others and think that that's for the best of us and the best of the flourishing of life. I think at first um, it's important that everything, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I think this is the, the beauty of, of um, uh, using Marx and what Marx has taught us today. You know, everything has a history uh, and capitalism spe specifically, its greatest trick as a, as, a, as a global system is to sell itself as something that has been always here <laughs> And once, once established, you know, there is no other way of organizing society other than on its terms. Uh, and when we look uh, and you use it, the term, I started with the Great Reset, not because it's a conspiracy idea, but because it was actually the cover of the Time magazine. I don't think the Time magazine is conspiring, you know? I think they're quite blunt and open. Um, um, there is... Um, throughout history, you know, um, a trajectory, especially on the West, on the East, I, I could, I would not be able to, to elaborate upon, but this um, vision that some people have the comprehension of the totality, you know, mm -hmm. and they can see the path forward. Uh, in our tradition, as I said, I, I started with the Christian view, we have Rome and we have the Roman Empire as um, an idea for organizing Europe and, and the Near East and to rule and to have roads and infrastructure and commerce. Uh, we had great, greater empires also in Asia with the Genghis Khan, the Mongol Empire. We had the Inca Empire in, um, in South America. But this idea of colonialism can only exist if we think on the opposite, this imperial mind. And the imperial mind, it has a vision that we don't share, you know, and they organize the larger framework. And we just live our lives thinking that we are deciding on the small little things, but the, 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 the larger pieces are already in place. And uh, bringing this to, the, to where we are now, uh, I think there is history and extensively researched and documented about the birth of cybernetics, the birth of the science of systems, the system of systems. So we have this moment, um, uh, especially pre and uh, right after the Second World War, where the computing powers and the developing of, te of technology and aerial technology were walking towards this big convergence. We had, in terms of uh, history, those interests can look at the Macy's conference uh, uh, in the US, and it has set a network of intellectuals, intellectuals in Europe and US, and that uh, went to run uh, university departments and etc. And they have forged it, you know, it's a long history, of course, but uh, there is a tradition of a technocratic elite that sees itself not as part of a nobility or of some royal house, 
but they are affiliated to this fate in progress, this fate in science, this fate in society. The little problem is that this industry, this technological industry that uh, it's connected with the Silicon Valley and Stanford University, it's part of the military industrial complex in the United States. So it's not uh, something that floats above, let's say, maybe with some comparison, like the Jesuit order for spreading the fate of the Vatican, but it has an army. It has the world most um, strongest currency that the US dollar behind. So I think that this pulling off the streets, if we want to dig deeper, has to be understood as what has brought us here with the world that was built after the Second World War, where the dollar was the, 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 the hegemony of the dollar and the dollar as the global currency that organizes all the other economies. Now we're walking towards uh, another chapter. We don't know the role of China, but we do have some very knowledgeable people that are, I would say, not pulling the strings because this the image is kind of weird, but uh, are elites that circulate and they know they share the vision. And I think this is very important for us to be aware. Of.